Karibu. Welcome to another Image Bible Study. We are happy to have you this amazing Thursday. This is your first time. Karibu sana. And uh, if you've been joining us for the past few, for the last couple of weeks, uh, we are happy to have you. And uh, we are hoping to continue this amazing fellowship in the midst of a, of a, of a pandemic. And uh, as we worship, as we communion together, we just pray that we've been able to minister to you right in your homes. Ever since the pandemic started, uh, where the, the government declared a lockdown, uh, God placed in our hearts to start a, 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 a more of a communion type of fellowship whereby every Monday and Friday we join each other uh, through Zoom and we, we pray for the things that God has placed in our hearts. And over the last couple of weeks we've been able to see uh, people, they have people's families getting healed. Uh, we've been seeing people uh, just wanting to recommit their lives to Christ and just um, coming to a place whereby they're actually experiencing who God is. So, uh, so every Monday and Friday, uh, we usually have a prayer room at 8.15 p.m. The link is usually posted in our Instagram page bio. And, the, and if you want to, to still join us, and if you don't have an Instagram account, you can still WhatsApp us or email us, and we shall, we shall be forwarding to you the link every Monday and Friday. In this year, we started a program called Formation 2K20 that is meant to disciple young men and women who just cleared high school, the class of 2019, my ex-can. So, uh, so if uh, if you know anyone who's finished high school last year and you'd want them to, to be discipled in a way that will be able to walk in truth and in freedom to who God has called them, this is the right place to be. So we ask you to, to email us or to DM us on, on the description, on the links posted on the description box, and we'd love to have you guys be with us. For the last couple of weeks, we've been we've been able to reach you guys at your own homes, and we really thank you God, we really thank God for the privilege of doing so. So, as you've seen uh, from the first video to right now, where we are, uh, it's because of a generous giving that we've been able to improve and uh, come come up more in being able to, to reach you the right way that is that you guys really deserve. So, we we'll really urge you to 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 continue giving, and we really thank God for for your generosity. And we pray that he'll, he'll just enrich you as, as more as you give, he'll, he'll give you more to continue being part of something that is changing people's lives every Thursday. So if you do want to give or to, to continue partner with us, the number is on the screen or in the description box. And we'd really love to, to continue fellowshipping and communing together while being at home or wherever we are. So thank you for listening to me and as we are about to to invite the speaker of the word, uh, we just pray that God will, will reach you and will call you to a, to a higher place that you guys are supposed to be. Good evening. Uh, we're very glad to have you here. We're going to spend uh, the next few minutes to discuss to our dear God, Alafu. Uh, yeah, to Ndele. So let's pray and then we get into that. Uh, Jesus, we want to thank you for such an amazing day as this. We want to pray that as we get into the sharing of your word, that our hearts will be open, our minds will be open. Holy Spirit, may you just um, come into us, cause the transformation that is needed to the glory and honor of your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Um, today, I want to speak um, along the lines of identity. And I want us to read from the book of Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 1. We are going to read verse 1 and verse 2. And it says, Therefore, we are surrounded by such... A, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Uh, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Um, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. So I want us to notice something here about verse 1. Uh, the book of Hebrews, even though they don't know who um, you know, wrote it, it was actually written to, to, to believers. It was not being written to non-believers. It was being written to believers. And so from uh, Paul, it is believed, some people believe that it is Paul who has written it, but whoever it was, verse 11, uh, is known as the Hall of Fame of the Bible. This is where you know, the people who really touched God's heart uh, are highlighted, you know, Kina Sarah, Kina Abraham, Enoch, um, Noah, all those guys. They're in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 11. So when now the writer of Hebrews begins by saying, therefore, he's like, in light of what we have just discussed in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, which now is, um, it mentions, highlights what these specific people did. And then, you know, uh, what some of their secrets were to be able to do what they did. And so it says, therefore, now in light of that, since we are surrounded by such a, a huge crowd of witnesses, so it is those people. Um, 
basically saying that this walk of faith, this idea of following God, this idea of being a believer is not something new. It is something that has been done by other people and these people are successful in doing it. And their success was not just spiritual, it was something that was being seen. It was something that um, people could see with their natural eyes, people who are not even born again. In the case of Abraham, for example, there's a place that says when he was going to uh, to rescue his cousin Lot, he fought with four kingdoms and, and, and um, you know, he won. And he thoroughly thrashed those four kingdoms to the point where those kings came to ask him, you know, who is your God? We want to worship him. So that is success that was actually in the in the physical realm. It was success that was being seen on earth even by the people who are not born again. And so now those are the people that are surrounding us. So this idea of following God, you know, it works. If, if that's a question you have, then the answer is that it actually works. And God is like, here is a huge a uh, crowd of witnesses who have already gone ahead of you, who have achieved these incredible things uh, for the kingdom of God. But then he says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. So, Paul is, uh, whoever, sorry, the writer of the book of Hebrews, uh, <laughs> Paul, and you'll forgive me, but the writer of the book of Hebrews, yeah? brings out a very interesting thing. He says that these are people who are born again and says that even for these people who are born again, these people who are walking this walk of faith, once in a while, there is, you know, the, uh, uh, okay, let me put it this way. In the book of Hebrews chapter 6, it explains that sin still resides in our flesh. Even though our spirit man is completely renewed and now um, is in, you know, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, Paul says that sin still, you know, reigns in the flesh. That's in the book of Romans. Uh, I, and I believe that's chapter 6. Uh, so once in a while in your walk of, of being a believer, it is important that you understand that you will fall. You will have shortcomings. You will not get born again and start walking uh, a walk of perfection. It's going to take, you know, dealing of your heart. And so the writer of the book of Hebrews is giving that provision that once in a while, you know, sin will entangle, entangle you and he's saying, now let us, um, you know, strip off every weight that is keeping us back from being as great as these people who are talked about in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Um, and especially the sin that so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race um, God has set before us. I love how this version is said in the NLT specifically because it brings it out in a very practical way. It says, we do this. So Paul, uh, however, the, the writer of the book of Hebrews is saying, in order for us to be as great as the people who are talked about in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 11, we need to strip off every weight, especially the sin that um, very closely, you know, entangles us once in a while. How do we do that? Um, the answer is in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. It says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates, the, uh, who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people, then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have all you have not yet given your lives in the struggle against sin. Um, and today I just want to talk about identity. I feel like I feel like whenever we talk about being a believer and, and talk, talking about sin, um, in most Christ Christian circles, we tend to agree that sin is not a good thing, that it is not something that um, should be there in the life of a believer. Even the people who are not born again, you know, even people who are not born again, when they're doing wrong things, they actually do know that they're doing wrong things. Um, however, the, 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 the thing that I would want to talk to us about is how we are meant to be getting there, how we are supposed to get to now this place where we actually become like Jesus. In the book of Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, it's a verse I really love. It says, that as we behold the glory of God as in a mirror, we will become transformed more and more into the image of the Son, that is in the image of Jesus, as we move from one level of glory to another. And I believe that scripture gives us a, a description, gives us how it is that God would want us, uh, or let me put it this way, it is a picture of how our relationship with God should be like. And that scripture brings about the idea of progression. It brings about the idea of, yes, say this season will go up, next season you should be in a higher place because it says that as you focus on the glory of God, as you do focus when, whenever you're looking at yourself in a mirror, you will become you will become transformed more and more to look like Jesus. As you focus on the glory of God, as you focus on God, as you focus on Jesus, what will happen to you is that you will become transformed more and more into becoming like Jesus as you move from one level of glory to another. So basically, as you grow as a believer, you know, as you will become more and more 
like Jesus as you grow as a believer. You are supposed to be growing as a believer. Your walk with God is supposed to be progressive, you know. For example, you shouldn't be um, like if God sets you free from a struggle, then that should be something that has been done. It should be done and dusted. That is not a place we should be going back to maybe in two years or in three years. Or, or, or it's, it's important for us to know that it is not normal for a believer to stay with a struggle. You understand? It is, you're not supposed to find a way of living with a struggle. Um, if, it's, if, if there's something in your life that is not bringing you closer to Jesus, you're supposed to take it back to Jesus for Jesus to remove that thing from your life. And that's what it says for every weight, you know, that drags us behind, every weight that is pulling us back every weight that is preventing us from going forward from focusing on Jesus we need to remove it how do we do that we focus on Jesus we focus on Jesus um, a lot of times you will find that we we, we we want to live in a very um, we want to get to this place in a very let me say ungodly way because it actually is not godly uh, to do that I am going to read a scripture from the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 20 and it says you have died with Christ and he has set you free from spiritual powers of this world so why do you keep following the rules of the world such as don't handle don't taste don't touch such rules are mere listen to this verse 22 such rules are mere human teachings about things that deteriorate as we use them this rule may seem may, may seem wise because they require strong devotion pious self denial and severe bodily discipline but they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. So, you find that as believers, we have become very good at setting um, rules and boundaries around us that are supposed to help us somehow safeguard, um, you know, uh, or not, not actually safeguard, but they're supposed to get us to this place of looking like Jesus, becoming like Jesus. So believers, don't do this. Don't touch this, which is what Paul is saying in the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse, uh, that's verse 22. You know, don't touch this. Don't, don't speak like this. Don't do this. You know, don't, 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 don't. And all this we believe is because I love, I love the phrase that he uses. He says, severe bodily discipline, you know. So we, we believe that by disciplining ourselves, by you know, coming into this place where we deny um, ourselves, we are the ones who are denying ourselves and stopping ourselves from doing certain things, we will become more like Jesus. But Paul says that will not help you in conquering your evil desires. It will not, they sound very wise when people say them. They sound very wise when you say them to yourself, but that they just, they stop at that. They just sound wise. They are not wise. They are not effective. They just look that way, but they are not. Uh, and, and, uh, and, um, I, I, I was, as I was thinking about it, I came to realize one of the reasons why we subscribe to these boundaries, why we subscribe to this um, very um, structured and, and routine, um, filled up with rules kind of living, is because we have a very skewed perspective of what it means to become to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Most of us think it is something that we are supposed to be working towards. But the Bible says we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It, it doesn't say we will become the righteousness of Christ in uh, of God in Christ Jesus, sorry. It says we are. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 14 that God has perfected those he is making holy. You understand? And that, that's a perfect scripture because it says uh, perfection is a thing of the spirit when christ died for you you received him you know and 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 you became the righteousness of god in christ jesus that spirit man that god made to dwell inside you that spirit man is perfect but holiness Holiness now speaks more to behavior, you know, and, and listen to that scripture it says he has perfected those he is making holy. So even after God is the one who has perfected you, God is the one who's going to make you holy. There is nowhere where you come into play as far as this conversation goes. There is nowhere where your efforts, your ideas, your your what you think is wise, what you think will work, there is nowhere. God requires you to do any anything. And that's, a, that's the biggest difference between the covenant of grace and the covenant of law, which is what most of us are still living by. Where we used to believe, where, where God, rather not what we used to believe, but where God demanded that we do certain things. We are, not, we are the ones who are not supposed to kill. We shouldn't lie. We shouldn't worship any other gods other than Yahweh. Uh, and, and now God brings us into a different system where Jeremiah prophesied and said that that covenant will be written in their hearts. It will not be something that they are, that they are performing 
it will not be a performance it will be something that they are living out and the difference is that in the covenant of the law we were sub- we were the center of that covenant but in the covenant of grace Jesus Christ is the center Jesus Christ is the person we focus on we don't look to ourselves to become Christians we don't look to ourselves to become good followers of Jesus we look to Jesus to make us the good followers that he desires to make us the the brilliant disciples that he wants us to become we look to him and a lot of times we don't do that because our understanding of what it means to become the righteousness of God we think it is something that we are working towards but it is something that we have already been given the bible says that this, that salvation is the gift of God unto men it is something that is already living inside you and as you focus on Jesus Jesus will be coaching you and teaching you how to allow whatever is already inside you to come now into literal manifestation so things like kindness things like patience things like self control all those the bible says they are fruits of the holy spirit you understand fruits are things that come out of a process they are not things that you work towards they are things one thing happens and then this thing comes to pass down now that we are calling fruits and it these are called the fruits of the holy spirit to to bring the implication that it is in the process of having fellowship with the holy spirit that these things will actually come to pass you will not become self controlled by deciding to be self controlled you will not become kind by deciding you're not going to be using harsh words when talking to people you're not going to achieve those fruits by deciding that that is the kind of person you want to become as long as you 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 are at the, you are the center of this conversation let me tell you nothing will happen you will you will keep looking at other believers who are growing and becoming more and more into the image of the sun and wondering why it's not happening to you the secret is to shift your attention from thinking that this is something that you're supposed to be working towards coming to a place of understanding it is something that the lord has already blessed you with now you need to go back to him because he says he is the initiator of your faith he is the it is his idea he's the one who begins it also says that is the one who's going to perfect it is one who's going to bring it to completion so everything revolves now around Jesus we are not supposed to be conscious of how of how we live we are not supposed to be conscious of how we talk to people we are just supposed to talk to people you understand so as you spend time with Christ because you spend time with Christ because you spend time with the holy spirit talk to people the bible says that out of the abundance of your heart your mouth will speak So Jesus Christ is asking you to allow him to be the one who determines what is this abundance that is in your heart. If it is him, then you literally don't have to worry about the kind of things you that you say because out of the abundance of your heart you will speak. People who worry about the things that they they say and how they say them, those are people who are not really sure of what exactly is residing inside their hearts. But God is calling us to this op- giving us this opportunity of actually being sure of what what it is that we are saying and not just in speech even in action in everything as far as life is concerned in everything that we are doing god is letting us know that there is a possibility there is a provision for you to literally with every word with every action you do it will point back to god how by focusing on him not focusing on yourself understanding that righteousness your identity it is something that is already inside you now you just need to let it out now you just need to go back to god and allow him now to change you the bible says that you will be transformed by the renewal of your mind so your spirit man was renewed there is no con- there is no argument there now as to the things of the flesh the things that we the day to day life god did not bring you into salvation only to leave you to figure out how you're going to live your day to day life he has a plan on how you're going to move from this being this wretched person to becoming the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus not just in the spiritual realm but also in the physical realm as you can see how hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 has started god is not okay with sin residing in you god is not okay with you having struggles and he's not saying it from a place of 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 being harsh at mimi ni mungu na nimesema it just is not a good thing it just not is it's not a cool way to live It's not a cool way for you to live with struggles. It's not a cool way for you to, you know, to to keep living with shortcomings in your heart and God wants to take them out. But he says the only way that you will do that is by fixing your attention on the author and the perfecter of your faith, not on yourself. And for for those of us who are in that walk of now um you know being 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 in that position of understanding that this is something that has already been placed in us the next thing that we need to watch is our confession the bible says that in the book of psalms 1 that them who meditate on the word of on the word of god day and night are like trees that have been planted next to streams of water psalms chapter 1 It says that those who meditate on the word of God they are like trees that have been planted next to streams of water you know that they bear fruit even in dry seasons 
meditation a lot of us subconsciously or even consciously like to meditate on what we do wrong ah mimi mimi unajua mimi nimeshakubali mimi nakwanga na hasira nakwanga na issue na hasira mimi nishakubali mimi nakwanga na issue na self esteem i've already i've already made peace with the fact that i'm not the most beautiful person on this planet i've already made peace with the fact that you know no one will ever want me i will always be living in rejection see the reason you're living in rejection is not because people are rejecting you no it's because that is what you have fed your mind with that is what on a day to day basis you feed your mind with and so god is like feed your mind with my word what does the word of god say about you it says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made it says that you are perfect you know it says that that uh, you know he has perfected those he's making holy so god says you are perfect and when our shortcomings come when when those shortcomings come when we find ourselves falling again with the things that we used to struggle with that is the kind of confession that we need to be making we are not supposed to now come into this place of saying ah mazimi nimeokoka nimetry stuff imenishinda cheki wacha kujaribu maybe hiyo ndo kitu unafanya mbaya wacha kujaribu god does not want you to try to become a believer god does not want you to try to become a, an effective follower of jesus he just wants you to look at him keep your eyes on jesus and then he will do the rest for you he will make you into who he needs you to become and the reason you keep going back into those uh, into sin and into shortcomings is is the is the mere fact that you are the center of attention in your life it is the mere fact that you keep focusing again and again on you as opposed to focusing on a person who's perfect a person who has no sin in him a person who is now the definition of what righteousness is and the more you look to him the more you can become like him but the more you look to you the more you will become like you you know people will come and tell you believe in yourself don't believe in Jesus because when when we say we are believing in ourselves it means that we are believing in what the bible says that there is a deep corruption that lies within our hearts that is what we are believing in so the more you keep looking to yourself what you will keep seeing is sin what you will keep seeing is a messed up human being and what you see is what you become you know what you constantly fix your gaze on is what eventually you become the bible says as a man thinketh in his heart so is he so what is it that you are thinking in your heart what is, what are the thoughts that are flooding your heart are they thoughts that are informed by the word of god concerning you or are they thoughts that are informed of your experiences growing up your parent left you you know or or you've been dumped sijuma rangapi those are the things that you keep on focusing about you keep on seeing how people have always rejected you and so you keep thinking that you're not attractive enough for anyone to want you in their lives but you miss the point that someone wanted you in his in their life so bad that they died on the cross for you You know why don't you focus on that why don't you focus on this person who wanted you so badly that he spared no cost to have you in fellowship with him that is what god is inviting you to do to fix your attention on him as long as you keep looking back to yourself there will be no progress well that is for the people who are interested in becoming effective followers of jesus we will not do that by setting rules around us setting boundaries around us setting all this Isi vitu zote zenye tunafanyanga vile wa Kristo wanafaa waishi. That is not how you go you're going to become am Kristo. The only way you become like Jesus is by looking to Jesus. No other way. And for those of us who are in that walk, you have to be naive enough to believe what God is saying about you even when your circumstances don't. Yeah? So you, God says you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We look around how you live your physical life. That is not the case. Listen. Confess to righteousness. Do not confess to sinfulness. Confess to righteousness. If you're going to become a person who now actually walks in righteousness, you must confess to righteousness. The reason you are walking in sinfulness is because that is what you are confessing to. So my question to you today is what is your confession? Are you confessing to to the person who the Lord has made you to become or are you confessing to the person who has always been messed up since you met them? You know, you have been like this since the day you knew you. You nothing has changed. Why don't we try something different? Why don't we try changing our confession? Why don't we try now looking to God? As we have been looking to ourselves for for all our lives. Why don't we change things? Why don't we now try looking to God? So my challenge to us today is my question to to you today is what is your confession? You know what 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 informs what is abounding in your heart? Is it God or is it what you have gone through in life? You know some of these experiences are sad, man. They are. They are really sad. But they don't have to stay that way. You don't have to walk around life feeling sorry for yourself. God can change that for you. You don't have to go around looking looking like you know a charity case. God can change that. God can make you a person who now is upright, a person who even other people can look up to. 
That is the promise of God, should you just choose to focus on him. So my challenge and my question to you today is, what is your confession? What informs your confession? Who are you looking at? Are you looking at you or are you looking at Jesus? And if you're looking at you, how is that going for you? Let's pray. Uh, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for conviction. We thank you, God, for just what you've taught us today, God, about walking in identity, Lord, watching our confession, confessing to the right things, Lord. I pray, God, for every single person who shall watch this video, that, Father, conviction from the Holy Spirit will just land on their hearts and that they shall see how you look at them, God, and they shall desire to become that person. We thank you. We bless you. Amen. You're watching this video. You're not born again. You don't know Jesus. You are that person who is still in that space of having so many struggles and so many bondages in your life. Can we tell you that you don't have to live like that? A person died on that cross. Jesus died on that cross for you to offer you forgiveness of sins that should you accept him in your life, you know, you get, you will be changed. Your life will be changed. You will become the son, the daughter of God, a person who will have direct access to God for the rest of your life. And if that is you, why don't you repeat these words after me? Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me, that I may have forgiveness for my sin. Today I repent of all my sin, and I ask that you may come into my heart. Write my name in your book of life. In the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. If you've said those words, you are now officially born again. Welcome to the family. God uh, says in his word that now there is a celebration in heaven because of you. He is so glad that you've come back to him. Um, why don't you use the contact information that is in the description box of, of this video? Reach out to us. We would love to walk with you, explain to you what it means to be a follower of Jesus uh, and to just be those friends and that family that surrounds you as you walk that walk. Otherwise, have an amazing evening and God bless you. So I really hope you've been blessed by the word. Uh, my take home uh, was actually God calling me to a place of higher identity and just a place of just being able to focus on him every day of my life through every circumstances that I go through. Whether it is with my with my with the places that I struggle with or to the places where I'm strong, I've realized that the places where God's power is usually seen is the places where I invite him. So uh, I thank you for, for joining us and uh, we pray that you continue to stay safe, uh, keep your mask on, uh, continue praying and checking on each other and uh, let us keep fighting the good race that God has called us. See you next week.